So for some reason, my primary school class was obsessed with mushy monsters. We didn't really have Instagram or Twitter or Facebook because we were like, 10, so instead, as our main form of social media, we used virtual worlds like Mushy Monsters. Rather than texting, me and my friends would write notes to each other on the pin board, we'd keep our characters looking sharp, and if anyone got a membership, they would talk of the class. This is all to say Mushy Monsters was a staple of the early 2010s internet. There was a big kids virtual world boom during this time, and despite the crowded market, Mushy Monsters was right up there swinging with the big boys like Animal Jam and Club Penguin. So how exactly did a global multi-million dollar brand with over 80 million registered players fall into obscurity and shut down within a matter of years. Today let's take a look at the spectacular rise and subsequent fall of Mushy Monsters. Before we jump into the world of Mushy Monsters, I'd like to give a huge thank you to Boxu for sponsoring this video. Boxu is a premium Japanese snack subscription that delivers tasty and authentic Japanese snacks and teas straight to your door. Every month, Boxu puts together a new themed box with various new snacks and goodies. It's a delicious journey through Japan. This month's box is the Boxu Tanjobi, celebrating Boxu's sixth birthday with some of the top rated snacks by members and staff. There's a huge range of tasty snacks here, but some of my faves were the Kalpiko Mochi. I always love Boxu's Mochi, but these have a jam and marshmallow center, literally so good. There's also these very luxurious mochi truffles with a chocolate outer layer and a strawberry filling, and they come with these adorable little toothpicks for easy eating. The kabukiage rice crackers were also pretty supreme. Every box comes with a little booklet with all the info on the snacks and teas, and even has a map showing you where in Japan your snacks are from. Boxu partners with artisanal and family snack makers in Japan, which is awesome and means you're not only getting an authentic experience, but supporting independent businesses. Some snacks are even Boxu exclusive, which means you won't find them anywhere else. I can't recommend Boxu enough, the snacks are delicious and authentic, you get a huge range of different stuff, and you get a tasty surprise each month. Whether you want to share with friends and family, or get yourself some treats, there's nothing like unboxing Boxu. So head to the link in the description and use code IZZY to get $15 off your own authentic Japanese subscription from Boxu. Don't miss out on this amazing snack journey through Japan. Thank you so much to Boxu for sponsoring this video, and now let's get on with the story of Mushy Monsters. During the mid-2000s to early 2010s, there was this big old boom for kids' virtual worlds. It's kind of odd because nowadays we don't really see these types of games pop up anymore, but back then they were a huge part of the internet ecosystem. Adults had adult sites like Twitter and Facebook and the MSN, and kids had sites like Toontown and Bin Weevils and Neopets. And we can actually trace a lot of this back to Neopets, it was one of the earliest online browser games for kids launched all the way back in 1999. Technically it wasn't created with kids in mind, but the colourful creatures, cartoony graphics and addictive gameplay drew youngsters in by the dozens and the game's player base skyrocketed into the millions. From there companies realised that not only were kids and their parents wallets extremely profitable, but they were also pretty gullible and online advertising worked really well on them. The rest, as they say, is history. A steady stream of online virtual worlds released throughout the early 2000s, but the genre really took off during the late 2000s to early 2010s. Disney's $350 million acquisition of Club Penguin in 2007 was tangible proof that online virtual worlds could be extremely profitable, and so the floodgates opened. Mies, Ben Weevils, Pixie Hollow, Free Realms, Wizard 101, Pirate 101, Our World, Super Secret, BarbieGirls.com, Fantage, Gaia Online, Animal Jam, Habbo Hotel, and of course, Mushy Monsters. Also, as a side note, I know that most people pronounce it Moshi, but I, I grew up saying Mushy, it's, it's how everyone I know said it, so I apologize, but I can't get that pronunciation out of my head, so that's how I'm gonna do it. I'm really sorry if that's annoying. Mushy Monsters, or the Big Double M as I like to call it, was created by Michael Acton Smith and subsequently developed and released by British entertainment company Mind Candy. If that name vaguely rings a bell, it's because Mind Candy were behind a little project called Perplex City. Yeah, I couldn't believe it either, but the company that created Mushy Monsters were also behind the internet famous Perplex City ARG that ran from 2005 to 2007. The ARG led players on an insane online treasure hunt and had several infamously hard to solve puzzles, including one card of a man called Satoshi simply directing players to find him. It took over a decade to solve that one by the way, and if you want to learn more about Perplex City, there are some great videos covering it. Anyway, after creating the brilliant but probably not very profitable Perplex City, Mind Candy shifted their 
focus from ARGs to just Gs and began development of Mushy Monsters in 2007. On the creation process of Mushy Monsters, Michael Acton Smith wrote, quote, I'd seen how much they loved technology and how comfortable they were with the web. I thought the internet was going to be the next amazing canvas to create wonderful entertainment for kids. I knew how much kids loved nurturing, whether it was Tamagotchi or Furby or even the pet rock back in the 70s. I thought that would be a smart place to try and build something new. The game quietly launched in May of 2008 with minimal success. It actually took about a year and a half of quote scratching the heads and wondering what to do before the game suddenly took off in the summer of 2009. Mushy went from a few thousand players to over 10 million seemingly over 9. From there it grew exponentially. By the time of its shutdown it had over 80 million. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Mushy Monsters was like a hybrid of pet care simulator and an MMO. You had to keep your monster happy and well fed by playing games and feeding it food which kept players coming back since the monster's health would drop on days you didn't log in. The pet care elements were fairly light, the monsters didn't have complicated stats or needs and they couldn't die, they just get kinda sad and stinky. The rest of the game was pretty standard though, you could level up your monster and earn rocks, the in-game currency, by playing games and puzzles. You could dress your monster and decorate their house and you could friend and chat with other players on a little pin board. There were also tons of mini games including but not limited to Moshling, Boshling, Thumpoglump, Jaunty Jack, Shouty Shack, Quick, Sand and the prestigious members only underground disco which was just a simple rhythm game. Also the ice cream game was honestly legendary, I can't tell you how many hours I spent playing it as a kid even though the later levels are ridiculously hard and for some reason these little freaks can't even wait 2 seconds for a single cone even though I'm working as fast as I can, Jesus Christ. Ahem, <clears throat> sorry. Mushlings were also a very prominent feature of the game, they were these little mini pets that you could get by planting certain seed combinations in your garden to attract them. It was a pretty effective way to keep players hooked in, you'd have to wait real world hours for the plants to grow and once you'd attracted a mushling you could display it or add it to your zoo. Great for both those who wanted to flaunt their rare mushlings and status and those who just enjoyed collecting. There were a ton to choose from, from Prof Hef the molecular chef to Nutmeg the woodland walnut to Mishmash the crummy mummy to Hocus the wonky wizard who looks like he's seen unspeakable things. To display more than a few mushlings you had to be a member and that in combination with the whole seed system meant that you have to spend a lot of money both in and out of the game to collect any decent amount of them. It was a delightfully devilish scheme to hook kids in and get them spending money and it was crazy effective. Mushlings became like their own brand with tons of merch and collectors. I think one of the main reasons Mushy got so popular is because it was basically Facebook for kids. It really sucks that the original shut down because I had so many messages on the pin board between me and my friends. Like it wasn't just like we would write notes to each other casually like hey how you doing? Like we would have full on private conversations, drama, everything like on this public pin board for everyone to see. I'm not joking when I say this really was like a main form of communication. What Facebook Messenger is now is what the Mushy Monsters pin board was back then. It's hard to imagine kids using Mushy Monsters as their primary form of social media and communication these days since Instagram and Twitter are so widely used by kids now, but back then, at least in my experience, parents seemed to be a lot more wary about letting their young children use the internet, so these online virtual worlds were a lot more present. It gave kids a place to post and make friends while giving parents peace of mind that their kid was relatively safe. It was like a baby's first Facebook kind of thing, a very sanitized and simple version of social media for kids and that's what we used it for. And this is what was so ingenious about Mushy Monsters, since kids were using it as their primary form of social media, it very quickly became a status thing. Kids with memberships were revered, they could add multiple stories onto their house and deck it out with exclusive items, they'd earn double XP and rocks, they could play exclusive games and access exclusive areas and they could acquire rare Mushlings and display them all. The thing I remember most vividly though is Colorama, the ultimate status symbol in the Mushy world. Colorama was a building located in the port which was a members only area and it allowed you to recolor your monster any color you wanted. While the simple plebs were stuck with the limited default color palettes, members walked around in neon turquoise, lime green, hot pink and most commonly of all black with red eyes because it looked cool and emo. Like many other games of its ilk, Mushy Monsters came under fire many times for predatory marketing and paywalling. Many of the game's features were locked behind a membership slash premium currency paywall and mind candy were even investigated by the UK Advertising Standards Authority. They were subsequently asked to change the wording of their in-game advertisements. Phrases like members get more missions and unique mushlings, epics with prizes, cool new games, join now, the super mushies need you, and members are going to be super popular were criticized as pressuring and or manipulating young players into buying memberships. And this sort of covert pressure and manipulation is totally what every other online virtual world was doing as well, there's no doubt about that, but they had to be covert about it. A lot of these kids games had shady advertising and addictive gameplay embedded into their design so when Mind Candy ended up changing the wording
need to comply with the ASA, it was definitely a band-aid fix to a much deeper problem. But I digress, let's talk about Mushy Monster's insane merch. Obviously Mushy Monster's was big, but I really think a lot of people underestimate just how big it was in its prime. With tens of millions of kids registered, it was estimated that one out of every three children in the UK had an account. That is crazy. In a Guardian article published in 2012, the company claimed to be the top licensed property in the UK, and in 2013 it was labelled as the number one toy brand in the UK market ahead of Barbie, Star Wars, and Lego. That's right, Mushy Monsters had branched out into merchandise, and they weren't just making plushies and print-on-demand shirts. Stationery sets, silly bands, stickers, tons and tons and tons of books. Trading cards, plushies and soft toys galore, top trumps, monopoly, pillow pets, bags, slippers, pajamas, toothbrushes, advent calendars, charm bracelets, hairbands, puzzles, beanbags, and mega mosh balls, just to name a few choice items. The monthly Mushy magazine became a top seller in the UK just a year after its release and proceeded to publish around the globe for eight years before its discontinuation. In 2012, Sony Music signed Mushy Monsters to the label and released an album called Music Rocks, which went gold. There was even a party thrown in London to celebrate the album's gold status where people got to pose with a giant vacant-eyed poppet and it yielded some truly wonderful photos. But the biggest money makers of the Mushy Monsters brand were Mushlings. Yeah, we're back to the Mushlings. It always comes back to them. Not only were they on pretty much every piece of merch from shirts to bags to pencil sharpeners, but due to their highly collectible and addictive nature and game, they made the perfect candidates for blind bag toys. Mind Candy came out with tons and tons and tons of Mushling blind bags and play sets. These little miniature plastic Mushlings alone probably earned Mind Candy multi-millions. Heck, even I had a few of the toys. They've been lost to the sands of time now, so I can't show photos, but I had DJ Quack, the Disco Ducky, Waldo the Tabby, Nerdy Cat, Angel the Sky Pony, and Ecto the Fancy Banshee. So yeah, I was pretty cool back then. <laughs> Mushlings were also the main focus of the 2012 Nintendo DS game Mushling Zoo which became one of the best selling games for the console in the UK. By this point Mushy Monsters wasn't just a simple computer game or online world, it had become a brand with a capital B. Jason Perry, head of Mushy Monsters music division said quote, The thinking behind it is that we don't want the company to just be a computer brand, we want to turn it into the number one children's brand. Somehow Mind Candy had turned a simple game about goofy monsters into a multi-million dollar global brand with best-selling video games, record deals, and millions of pounds worth of merchandise being distributed across the globe. So how did Mushy Monsters go from one of the most popular and profitable online brands in the world to a distant memory that barely anyone even mentioned when it shut down? Sorry, I didn't mean for it to sound so mean. I didn't, I didn't mean to roast Mushy Monsters like that. Anyway, let's find out. If you wanted, you could attribute the shutdown of Mushy Monsters to many things. For example, the Lady Gaga lawsuit debacle. I've actually made a video solely about this whole situation on my channel before, but I'll give a quick rundown because it's pretty wild. Mushy Monsters had this little running joke of celebrity parody characters. There were Simon Growl, Dustbin Beaver, Banana Montana, The Goo Fighters, The Gronus Brothers, Broccoli Spears, you get the picture. Among the A-listers, there was a Mushling called Lady Goo Goo, an obvious parody of Lady Gaga, and Mind Candy made her the face of their new hit single The Mushy Dance in 2011. What can I say? It's a great song. A banger, if you will. However, unfortunately, the Mushy Dancer's roaring success and millions of views would be its downfall. Mind Candy was actually sued by Lady Gaga and her legal team, yes, that is a real thing that happened. They argued that both the character's likeness and the song, which was inspired by Lady Gaga's bad romance, would lead the public to believe that Lady Gaga was affiliated with or partnering with Mind Candy when it was an unlicensed parody. The High Court granted an injunction that forbade Mind Candy from creating any more content with the Lady Goo Goo character, and eventually all mentions of the character were taken off the website alongside any merchandise with her likeness and heartbreakingly the mushy dance itself. Rest in peace you beautiful work of art. The character's name was changed from Lady Goo Goo to Baby Rocks and her appearance was altered to remove any likeness and they also removed Dustbin Beaver just to be safe. The whole situation was resolved fairly quickly and painlessly but you could tell that Mind Candy was a bit salty about it. Michael Acton Smith, the CEO of Mind Candy, wrote quote, It's pretty obvious that kids will be able to tell the difference between the two characters. The shame is that millions of kids fell 
fell in love with Lady Gugu's debut single on YouTube and now won't be able to enjoy her musical exploits. It was all done in the name of fun and we would have thought that Lady Gaga could have seen the humour behind this parody. I think this could be a worrying precedent for other parody acts and tribute bands. As funny as it would be for the downfall of Mushy Monsters to be caused by a Lady Gaga lawsuit, I don't think that was the reason. Unfortunately, as is the case with many nostalgic virtual worlds from my childhood, the shutdown can be pretty conclusively pinned on a combination of fading relevancy and the shutdown of Flash Player. In 2020, Adobe Flash Player, the foundation that hundreds of thousands of games and pieces of web media were built on, was discontinued and shut down, rendering all of that web content obsolete. Mindcandy could have remade the site or ported it to newer media like several other games have done, but that's where the fading relevancy part comes in. During 2011 and 2012, Mushy Monsters was riding high, it was one of the most popular brands in the UK and was pulling in revenue from every avenue imaginable, from Nintendo titles to music to movies to merchandise and more. But as Mind Candy themselves stated, their biggest competition was the mobile market. This was the early 2010s and if you'll recall, it was the era of the mobile app. Candy Crush, Angry Birds, Where's My Water, Poe, Talking Angela, all the big money was in the app store and because of this, online web games had a ton of competition from this market. Mind Candy spent a lot of money investing into the mobile market in 2013 with apps like Mushy Monsters Village, Talking Pop It, Mushy Carts, Mushling Rescue and the Mushy Music app though none of these really landed. All of that mobile investing combined with a dip in Mushy Monsters 1's surging popularity meant that during 2013 their profits dropped by over 30% and they suffered a loss of several million pounds. A few years later in 2016 it was clear that despite the game still being active and merch production continuing, revenue had been rapidly declining as evidenced by a Guardian article published around this time. Quote, Mind Candy's revenues from Mushy Monsters subscriptions and membership cards fell from 13.2 million in 2013 to 5.7 million in 2014. But it was the company's licensing business that was hardest hit, with sales of magazines, toys and other merchandise falling from 12.8 million in 2013 to just under 3 million in 2014. While Mind Candy's mobile business grew from nothing in 2013 to 2.1 million in 2014, it was not enough to stave off a significant increase in the company's net losses from 2.2 million to 14.1 million. Despite investing heavily into the mobile market with tons of games, by 2016 Mind Candy were having to take out enormous loans just to keep the business afloat, loans which they weren't even 100% sure they'd be able to pay back. Later in 2017 they had to quote tap investors for a $1 million lifeline just to keep themselves in business and their staff had been cut from over 180 to just 22. The company was dangerously close to collapse during this time, effectively treading water using investor funds and loans. Mushy Monsters was technically still afloat in 2019 and they technically technically still had a year before they needed to shut down due to Flash, but by this point an early shutdown was more of a mercy than anything. The game had remained pretty much unchanged throughout the years aside from occasional new features and minigames, and it's clear that the multi-million dollar mushy boom of 2012 was long behind them. And honestly, the game didn't really go out with a bang, most of the original player base had grown up and out of the game, and while obviously there was still a pretty sizable player base, new kids weren't really coming to the site like they used to. Not to sound like an old coot, but back in my day you had to earn your stripes on a cringy virtual world before moving to Twitter or Instagram, but nowadays kids just kind of skip right to them, so Mushy Monsters just isn't really relevant anymore. Because of the changing internet and the fading relevancy of kids' virtual worlds, Mushy Monsters just wasn't drawing in the players like it used to, and unfortunately on December 19th, 2019, Mushy Monsters shut down for good after 14 years. So where exactly is Mind Candy now after their mushy empire has fallen? In 2017 they launched a mobile app called Mushy Twilight Sleep Stories which was basically a mindfulness app for kids designed to help them calm down and sleep better. Despite being created during 2017, which if you'll recall is the year they had to get a huge million dollar loan to keep the company afloat, the app has actually been pretty successful. It has hundreds of stories, a few pretty famous voices on board and thousands of parents paying monthly subscription fees to use it. By all accounts it's been pretty profitable, nowhere near as successful as Mushy Monsters, but a pretty steady and well-respected business nonetheless. I can't really speak on the efficacy of the app itself, it has tons of really positive reviews from parents, but then some other sources say that the app isn't helpful, but I don't know, I'm not a parent. In 2020, after the shutdown of Mushy Monsters, Mind Candy changed their name from Mushy Twilight Sleep Stories to just Mushy, truly marking the end of an era. Honestly, I wish them all the best, making a mindfulness and sleep app for kids is one of the least evil things they could have done as a giant company. Watch them come out with like Mushy Monsters 
as NFTs after I say that. But what about the game itself? Well, after it was taken offline in 2019, players quickly got to work putting together a fan-made recreation of the game called Mushy Monsters Rewritten. It's preserved basically everything about the original game, from the monsters to the minigames to the mushlings, and like all fan-made remakes, membership is free. It's pretty great, though. From what I've read online, the lead coder of the project has gotten into some drama and is going to shut down the whole site, and they've taken down the Discord, but also they've threatened to do this in the past for attention and all the other stuff are banding together to make another separate remake. I don't know, it's a lot of drama. I swear these fan-made recreations of beloved kids' virtual worlds always have the wildest drama. Yes, I'm looking at you, Club Penguin. Anyway, it sounds like even if Mushy Monsters Rewritten is taken down, there'll be another one taking its place soon enough, so let's hope that at least one of them manages to stay online. It would suck to lose Mushy Monsters forever. I honestly can't imagine an internet in which the game is just some distant, unplayable relic rather than a classic staple for kids across the globe. So many memories, so many mushlings. And that is the story of Mushy Monsters. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope that you enjoyed that video. Um, Mushy Monsters was very near and dear to my heart as a kid. And um, I know that obviously considering how many players it had, I'm sure a lot of you also played it as kids and have a lot of memories about it. So I hope that you enjoyed this video um, and it covered all of the bases in terms of merch and games and drama. <laughs> it's a pretty classic topic. Like I said earlier, I do have a video exclusively on the whole Mushy Monsters lawsuit thing that I did about a year ago, which is crazy. It does not feel like it's been a whole year, but I guess it has. So um, <laughs> anyway, it was fun to revisit Mushy Monsters. Um, I also want to apologize for taking such a long time to get this out and not having as many videos out this month. I had my wisdom teeth out, but I'm feeling a lot better now. So I should be back to making videos um, like on a more regular basis. So yeah. <laughs> Again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to Boxu for sponsoring this. They're awesome. Definitely go check them out. And yeah, I'm going to end this now. <laughs> thank you for watching. Um, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you so much to my Garfield Overlords over on Patreon. Sheriff Whiskey, Lady Cerebellum, Xavier Araujo, SHSL Sunsun, Grip Gunderson, Sophie Skidder, Simon, Katrina Likes 5e Stuff, Dozo Blint, Red Meth, The Furby Librarian, Matt LRJ, Ren Pendragon, Michelle Olsen, Astrium Vortex, Joe Bradshaw, Jordan Nielsen, John Leach, Jorge K. Cruz, Helm Hamburger Hand, Chicory, Jane, Kimono My Gyro, Fitzy, Pom, Dana Home Gardener, Arcantilus, Jesse Chisholm, Charlie B, Brianna Robinson, Dan Meadow and Doug. Thank you guys so much for supporting me as always. If you want to join these guys over on Patreon, the link will be in the description. And yeah, thank you so much for watching as always. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!